This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at reaction mechanisms. Chemical reactions can occur in a series of steps called elementary steps. The sequence of elementary steps is the reaction mechanism. In this reaction, nitrile chloride reacts to form nitrogen dioxide and chlorine gas. Here we can see a proposed reaction mechanism for the reaction. The reaction mechanism is composed of two steps, step 1 and step 2. In the first step, the nitrile chloride reacts to form nitrogen dioxide and an atom of chlorine. In the second step, nitrile chloride reacts with a chlorine atom to form nitrogen dioxide and a molecule of chlorine. We can also see that step 1 is labelled as slow and step 2 as fast. The slower step in the reaction mechanism is the rate determining step. The overall rate of reaction depends on this step. So in this reaction mechanism, step 1 is the rate determining step. The overall rate of the reaction depends on this step only. It's important to note that the reaction mechanism is only a theory of how the reaction takes place. Therefore, we can never prove that the reaction mechanism represents the actual chemical change taking place. So next we look at the three criteria that need to be applied when considering a reaction mechanism. The first is that the sum of the elementary steps must add up to the overall equation. The second is the rate expression of the rate determining step must agree with the experimentally determined rate expression. And the third is that the elementary steps must be reasonable. Unimolecular and bimolecular steps are more common, whereas termolecular steps are unlikely. So next we'll apply these three criteria to the reaction mechanism in the previous slide. So the first step is to determine if the elementary steps add up to the overall equation. To do this, we need to identify any reaction intermediates in the reaction mechanism. If we look at the reaction mechanism, we can see that the chlorine atom is a reaction intermediate. It is produced in one step and consumed in the next step. So here we can see that the chlorine atom is produced in step 1 and it's consumed in step 2. Reaction intermediates do not appear in the overall equation, therefore they cancel out. We are now left with 2 NO2Cl in the reactants and 2 NO2 and 1 Cl2 in the products. So from this we can see that the elementary steps add up to the overall equation. So next we look at the molecularity of each elementary step. Step 1 is unimolecular with one reactant particle and step 2 is bimolecular with two reactant particles. Therefore both elementary steps are probable. Finally, we'll see if the rate expression determined from the rate determining step agrees with experimental data. So here we have the rate expression that was determined from the first step, which is the rate determining step. According to this rate expression, the reaction is first order with respect to nitrile chloride. And the reaction was found to be first order with respect to nitrile chloride from experimental data. So from this we can see that the rate expression determined from the rate determining step agrees with the experimentally determined rate expression. So to summarize, this reaction mechanism has satisfied all three criteria. However, although we have evidence that supports this reaction mechanism, we can never be sure that it represents the actual chemical change taking place. In our next example, we'll look at the proposed reaction mechanism for this reaction. Just like in the previous example, we have a two-step reaction mechanism with the slow step being the first step, which is the rate determining step. So we'll start by seeing if the elementary steps add up to the overall equation. So in step 1, the NO3 is produced and it's consumed in step 2. Therefore, the NO3 is a reaction intermediate and is crossed out. We also have 1 NO2 in the products in step 2 and 2 NO2s in the reactants in step 1. So we can cross out 1 NO2 from the reactants in step 1 and the NO2 from the products in step 2. So we are left with 1 NO2 and 1 CO in the reactants and 1 NO and 1 CO2 in the products. Therefore, the elementary steps add up to the overall equation. Next, we look at the molecularity of each step. 
So in both elementary steps, we have two reactant particles, therefore they are both bimolecular. Finally, we'll see if the rate expression that's determined from the rate determining step agrees with the experimentally determined rate expression. So this is the rate expression determined from the rate determining step, which is the first step. According to this rate expression, the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen dioxide. And the reaction was found to be second order with respect to nitrogen dioxide from experimental data. So we can see that the rate expression determined from the slow step agrees with the experimentally determined rate expression. So once again, we can see that this reaction mechanism satisfies the three criteria. Therefore, this is a possible reaction mechanism for the reaction. In our next example, we have a reaction mechanism where the second step is the slow step. So we'll start by identifying any reaction intermediates. We can see that the NO3 is produced in step 1 and it's consumed in step 2. Therefore, it cancels out. So we are left with 2NO plus O2 in the reactants and 2NO2 in the products. So from this we can see that the elementary steps add up to the overall equation. If we look at the molecularity of the elementary steps, we can see that both steps are bimolecular. The final criteria is to see if the rate expression determined from the slow step matches the experimentally determined rate expression. Because the second step is the slow step, we need to take a slightly different approach to this example. We start by writing the rate expressions for the forward reaction in step 1 and the reverse reaction in step 1. So here we have the rate expression for the forward reaction and here we have the rate expression for the reverse reaction. Next we write the rate expression for step 2. If we look at the rate expression for step 2, we can see that it contains the NO3 which is a reaction intermediate. Overall rate expressions cannot include reaction intermediates, so we need to eliminate the NO3 from this rate expression. To eliminate the reaction intermediate from the rate expression, we need to express the concentration of NO3 in terms of reactants. So by looking at step 1, we can see that it reaches equilibrium where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So here we have the rates of the forward and reverse reactions written in terms of the rate constant and the concentrations of reactants. Next, we express the concentration of NO3 in terms of reactants, which we can see here. The next step is to substitute in for the concentration of NO3 in the rate expression for the second step. And finally, this gives us the rate expression for the second step. So according to the rate expression determined from the rate determining step, which in this example is the second step, the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to oxygen. From experimental data, the reaction was found to be second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to oxygen. So here we can see the experimentally determined rate expression. So the rate expression that was determined from the slow step agrees with the experimentally determined rate expression. So to summarize, this reaction mechanism satisfies all three criteria. Next we look at one more example where the first step is the fast step and the second step is the slow step. So like in the previous example, we start by writing the rate expressions for step 1 for the forward and reverse reactions. We then write the rate expression for the second step. As we can see, the rate expression for the second step involves a reaction intermediate. The overall rate expression cannot include reaction intermediates, therefore we need to eliminate it from the rate expression. To eliminate the NOBr2, which is the reaction intermediate, we need to express it in terms of reactants, which is this step here. We then substitute for the concentration of the NOBr2 in the rate expression for the second step. And finally, we arrive at the rate expression for the second step, which you can see here. So next, we'll compare this rate expression to the experimentally determined rate expression. So the reaction was found to be second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to bromine. So to summarize, the rate expression determined from the slow step, which is the rate determining step, agrees with the experimentally determined rate expression. 
and this reaction mechanism satisfies the three criteria 